What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. We're working on Kodo's control panel and we are gonna wire up the Pandora's Box 6 on this. Boom shakalaka! So now real quick again, just a quick update. Saw my last video, we put, I can't really move this too much because I don't have that much wire room really, but I can move it a little bit. Basically put Game Room Solutions buttons on this. We added the coin buttons on the sides. And just now it's not really officially connected hardwire, but we do have the on and off switch working. This powers on the actual Pandora's box. Um, this right now is not gonna communicate to the actual Arcade 1UP power supply. It's not gonna like turn off the screen on the Arcade 1UP. It's just gonna turn off Pandora's box. But real quick again, at least I just wanted to test that real quick so we can at least now remove this biggest thing right now is that we're gonna wire up the arcade panel um, again Pandora's box does have like this newer style of a JAMA board going into it and all that um, so with this basically the biggest challenge that I did face is that we had to order new heads again the standard arcade head for it like an arcade one uh, standard arcade button the actual micro switch uh, does not fit the Pandora's box connections here. They are very small. I'll bring it a little bit closer. I know I watched the last video, you couldn't really see it with the focus. Um, but basically again, we have our wire head here. This is the real one. This is a 0.25. Bought this on Amazon. I think it cost me eight bucks for a pack of like a hundred. So you could kind of see a little bit of a comparison on at least the, the, the thickness of it. This does fit into the actual micro switch of Game Room Solutions. So it does fit, and I actually kind of like this a little bit easier because it is a little bit easier to remove. So basically, again, we are going to wire up the arcade. When I personally do my micro switches, the first thing that I do is I always wire up the ground. The ground is the easiest thing to wire up. And the big thing about a jammer board based system is that they have actually, these are kind of rubber banded to be separated. So you do have player one grounds and you have player twos so the big thing though that we're, I'm gonna do for Kodo is that I'm gonna ignore these grounds I'm not actually even gonna use them um, we still do need to connect one to make sure that the control panel communicates with Pandora's box but in reality for Kodo I'm gonna give him the Zinmo ground out of the Zinmo kit this way again this kind of is future proof so <laughs> that's wild though this will be future proof. So if, um, if Kodo ever decides that he does want to do, um, let's say a, a, a Raspberry Pi build or an actual Hyperspin build, he will have, basically it's pretty easy to set it up. You would basically remove your actual main inputs, but you will leave the ground input. So again, these are right out of Game Room Solutions. Uh, this, this, this does come with a Zinmo controller. So basically again, we're gonna take this, it's gonna wire up and I'm leaving the end, this end does go into an actual um, Zinmo board. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably change one of these to a male and then connect it. This way it's player one ground, player two ground. So again, basically right now, not to bore you, I'm not gonna record it, but basically I'm going to wire up only the grounds. First thing is to just wire up the ground. So I'm gonna take the actual Zinmo grounds that Game Room Solution supplies we're gonna do player one and player two. Remember, always keep your grounds to the player. Your grounds for player one should never go into the grounds for player two, um, only because if you ever have any issues or if you, any, if you ever find any hiccups, it's easier to know that, hey, there might be a problem with the ground. Like, that's how you can kind of start it. You never wanna put, like, let's say player A, B, C on player one, like the first three buttons, A, B, C. You don't wanna put the same grounds to player two, A, B, C. It's just something to be nice and neat. This way, in case anything ever fails on you, you gotta, I mean, that's just kinda, it's not basics, but keep that in mind. Always your grounds should be dedicated to the actual player. So right now, I'm gonna cut the camera and I'm gonna wire up the grounds. All right, guys, so yes, we are looking at a bunch of spaghetti right now, uh, but basically, I just wanted to show you, again, we do have our grounds hooked up. Basically, on this one, it is six buttons, coin, and start. So we only have eight buttons that are gonna be talking to the Pandora's box. If you notice real quickly, this is where my player start, player one start button ended. Look at all the grounds I have left. See that? 
So some people will then take this and go into player two, two, two you don't wanna do that. Always keep it separate. So I have player one ground, and right here on this ball, I have player two ground. So as you can see, again, separated, that's player two, this is player one side. You always wanna keep it separated, it's the easiest thing. As far as our controller here, there's always a ground. There's five wires here, so one is the ground and then the rest are up, down, left, right. Basically, I'm gonna take my ground and I'm just gonna kinda of tie it into one of these buttons here. Just makes it easier. Oh, I messed up this one. <laughs> so again, guys, just wanna show you what we're doing exactly for Cardo. This is future-proofing. We got the Zinmo, screwed it in. Unfortunately, I don't have short enough screws, but it is pretty rock solid. And again, we now have player one grounded and player two grounds. But again, we are still gonna connect the Pandora's box grounds to this. So basically what we're gonna do is that when it comes to the Pandora's box, I'm gonna basically take one of these I'm actually, I mean, I'm not a fan of cutting things, but I might cut it. Might as well just remove it because again, these connections are just atrocious. So we might just cut the ground out and then loop it into one of the buttons and then he'll be set. So just, again, we are we are also future-proofing this for Kodo. Hey guys, so quick discovery again, we're getting ready. Pandora's box, see again, somebody asked this before in like the forums. That's the JAMA connection on it. It's very small compared to a regular arcade JAMA. This actually has the controller input exactly how the Sanwa sticks were. So I removed the Sanwa sticks, we're just gonna give this to Kodo, and basically now we're just gonna connect it. Really cool connection, this goes right into the actual pinouts on the controller, which is great, and then it actually connects right into the daisy chain of the grounds. This one was very weird, two, two, four, six, eight. Oh, makes sense. They give you eight, eight grounds because in reality it's eight buttons. So, you know, it's not really set for like a, I would say a Zinmo. I mean, for a, a Raspberry Pi because, you know, we do need our admin grounds and all that. So this is set really just for the coin part of it. But basically, again, we're just going to connect this and at least we have our controller set. So real quick, guys, instead of me cutting this, well, I'm, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut maybe right here. I'm going to leave one ground. Went into my toolbox. And we do have a male 0.25 head. This right now we're gonna add to the daisy chain of the existing Zinmo. So basically we're gonna, again, it's always good to leave a little bit of slack. So I'm gonna probably cut this one out, cut it, and then we have also our daisy chains here and we'll be set. I don't want the camera to be too shaky guys, but I just wanna kinda breeze through it. Again, this right here was the Pandora's box ground i cut the ground i'm going to splice the ground and then we're going to add our head right to this wire here so i have this special kind of plier that has the head for it to actually crimp down these so basically again there is our head it's always good to have a little bit of the wire sticking out this way we have a secure connection give it a tug and then basically again we're going to take our player one ground we're going to make sure we're on player one ground and basically now I'm just going to put this into here. That right there is the final product. Look at that. Our head's in, held in, into our player one daisy chain. We are ready for future proofing. And now basically there is a ground going to the Pandora's box. And also we still have the ground connected to the Zinmo. So we didn't modify anything. We didn't cut the existing input on the Zinmo. Again, future proofing. Now here comes the fun part. Again, I actually saved time. We didn't have to crimp the grounds on these. Basically, I removed them. If you think about it, I mean, you're talking um, eight and eight. So I, had a, I would have had to crimp 16 new heads just for the ground. So luckily we have the Zinmo from Game Room Solutions because of the button kit, the button bundle that we get. Basically now I only have to crimp, I still have to crimp 16. So instead of crimping 32, I still have to crimp 16. We have the six player uh, buttons and we have the coin and the start. Luckily with the ground and with the controller input, the pinout that they have that they supply from Pandora's box, we don't have to supply that, we don't have to crimp it, we don't have to recrimp it. Now is the fun part. Basically again, the manual does state, you know, which wire goes to what, they're color coded, that's perfectly fine. I'm always the type of person I like to test it. So I'm gonna boot up the Pandora's box and we're just gonna go and we're gonna let it rock and we're gonna, we're just gonna, set this up
We have a pigtail. There is a pigtail that's gonna go right into the Pandora's box. Again, we do have this yellow connection. I removed it from the control panel. But at least now we will be able to navigate the menu. Again, I'm gonna kinda hardwire solder this. I might add an extension to this so that it's not that close. Um, but basically now, uh, what can I do to keep this in place for now? I'm gonna probably just grab a piece of wire just because I'm gonna play with it. So I'm gonna probably just wrap this with electrical tape. This way the power stays on. Okay, so now, got it plugged in. Again, I did kind of jerry-rig it. I kind of just electrical tape this. We don't want to play with it too much. We don't want the screen and you don't want to turn on and off systems really quick. I don't have the speakers connected just yet. Let's focus on the buttons first. Basically now with this on the boot, my player one joystick really should work right off the bat. Again, it was from the Pandora's box JAMA right into a connection on it. So hopefully we don't have to cut it. Let's just see. Yes, we are down so you guys can see it. We are up and we are down. Good. We don't have our buttons configured yet, but again, the hard part on this now is that we basically have to recrimp eight player one buttons and eight player two buttons. Again, there's so much wiring on this. Like the wires are long on a jam board based system. You might as well leave them long just in case you ever want to maybe move the PCB and keep it on the side if anything. So it's always good to keep that. You follow the manual. This apparently even the gem board consists, it, it can actually do Xbox 360 controllers. Uh, pretty cool, pretty sweet. Let's do the basics. Um, they have it labeled that as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So that's A, B, C on the top, A, B, C, D, E, F. So, and then they have the start and they have the coin. Again, just I'm not going to bore you guys because I don't really want to be too long of a video on this, but some of you guys like to see it. Some of you guys like to check it out. Basically, again, I'm going to look at this. On my pins, there's 20 pins here. This is where it gets tedious. Uh, basically, we're going to do player one first. So pin one, two, three, four, five. Pin five up. Let me see. One. One, two, three, four, yes, pin five from the bottom. So we have blank, one, two, three, four, five. I got a purple wire, purple white. So any purple white, basically we're gonna find the end to a purple white, which I got it here. And this right here is going to be considered our player one start. Um, so let's see this says button a to select just to I'm gonna jump around But let me do it real quick just to show you guys um, You guys don't see the manual, but one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Input 10 from the bottom is Our a button so input 10 from the bottom. This is where it gets tedious like no lie This is exactly where it gets tedious. I want to make sure that I'm in frame. Yeah 10 from the bottom one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is a green input. Green. Green, green, green. Basically right now, this is the green, this is button A. If I take this and hit it to a ground, it should connect. And there you go. Green is button A. I already have it in my hand. Basically just to show you real quick, I'm literally cutting it. Gone. This head is garbage again. The head to that is just so tiny. It's ridiculous. We now have our new Amazon connections. I'm going to strip, I would say about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. And now we're gonna slide it in right on the edge of it. Give it a nice little twist before you do it. I'm gonna slide it in. I'm gonna make sure that it does get a little bit of the plastic. I always like to make sure that the actual like housing of the wire is inside of this. We're basically now going to take this here and we're gonna crimp. Again, I never tried it with regular pliers. You could, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I do know for a fact this specific plier is meant to push this down. So again, right now, green button. I always give it a tug, give it a good tug. Now I could basically put this to button one. And basically now I should be able to move 
Yep, we got our left and our right, and I should be able to select my fighter. Boom. So real quick, again, we're gonna take this wire how here. We're gonna, do we're it. gonna cut. We're gonna this. find our player yeah. one coin. One, two, three, four. We're gonna cut. And I like how I showed you as a player right next to me. A quarter. Uh, we're gonna do four pins. Give it a twist. One, we're gonna grab two, our Amazon three, head right four. here. So our coin we're is gonna slide a blue button. button. I would like to white. put a little bit of the actual housing into it. It just adds more like security. Make sure that like you know, it's definitely secure inside. Um, these pliers, I don't know what they're called. They were here when we bought the building, like 1932. So I don't know what these are called. Basically right now I'm gonna take this, we're gonna put this into the coin on player one and we have coins. Three, four, I don't have my start plugged in yet. So let's do that real quick, just for kicks. I mean, this apparently goes after five seconds. It just goes into start. So might as well do that real quick. All right, guys, so again, for this control panel here, we do have Pandora's box set to um, coin mode. So it's kind of like an actual like customer mode um, as if you were gonna actually, you know, put it in a working situation. Uh, basically, if you wanna ever change the settings, there's a settings button on this and you change it. I have this set right now to hold down player one to exit. And again, real quick, we're gonna do just to show off the button, just to make sure the button's tested. You guys know it, we always load it up, the same game as always. Where are my OGs at? We always load up Street Fighter. Doesn't matter what version it is, we always do Street Fighter. We're gonna insert the coin because I have no coins, now I got a coin, and now we can play. So let's just check that out. Let's make sure our buttons work, number one. So player one start, right, down, left, right. My A button works. Let's just check out if our buttons work. Again, we do have all buttons wired up, new heads on them. And again, with us doing player one as the beginning, it took me about 15 minutes to do it. Now we could actually do really quick player two. So real quick, just to make sure, we wanna make sure, come on Blanca. We're gonna do one, one, good. We're gonna do one, two, three. My punches work, kick, kick, and kick, we're good. Again, to exit out, we're gonna hold down player one and it's gonna bring up the menu. Now, you'll be able to exit, okay? With this on coin mode, it does have the attract mode on it. So after about 10 seconds after the video file, it will switch the game, which is pretty cool. You could set it to free play, but for right now, we added the coin buttons. So for Kodo, we might as well do it. Just to show you real quick on how you could do it. On the actual Pandora's box is a little button. You press the button. It's gonna boot into the menu screen. You go into system config. You could also do the IO test. The IO test will show you and make sure that your buttons work. So A, B, C, we have it all here. See, this is also dumb. I'm gonna show, well, actually it's doing it as a, um, as Neo Geo style. It has button A as the bottom right, which some people might get confused, which is why I don't like Pandora's box. Check it out real quick, look at this. You would probably wire, this is button B, as you can see, as this says, but this is a Neo Geo setup, A, B, C, D. Again, you don't want to do that. I have A here. So as you can see, I'm pushing button A, B, C. So again, some people might get confused with that. That kind of sucks. But um, just to give you a heads up, again, the big thing is to make sure you do your save settings. We right now didn't change anything, so we are going to exit out. While Pandora's box reboots, check it out real quick. Again, player one harness. And now we have all of our new heads you can literally see it here. The big thing that's really great about this that we did now is that we could simply follow the same color code. So as you can see right here, a star button is purple and white. There's two colors on this. Coin button is blue and white. For example, button A is a green wire. Button B is blue. So now when we do this player two, I could easily do this within a couple of minutes I know where my buttons 1s, 2, A, B, C, D, and all that are there. So we're going to do this real quick. So now within a couple of seconds, not a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, we now have player 2 completely wired up. Again, check it out. Button A is green. Button A is green. Let's do real quick our start, purple, white. Our start, purple, white. So again, it is literally a copy and paste. As of right now, for this JAMA harness, each wire is being used. There is no wire not being used. Really traditional like arcade jammers, they have wires for speakers, 
So right now I'm trying to figure out what we're gonna do for Kodo for the speaker. But right now let's load up some Street Fighter and let's make sure our buttons work for player one and two on this. Real quick, let's just take a look. How many games are on this? Do, do, do. Sometimes these switch up, 1300. There's 1300 games on a Pandora's box six. So this is stock. Let's load up real quick. I'll leave you guys on my shoulder real quick. So again, real quick, we're gonna load up some Street Fighter 2. What's very like unique about this, and again, this is why I'm not really a fan of Pandora's boxes, is that they just mix it up. Player 2 coin is not a coin. It is actually, let's see, if you can focus it, it's a pause button right here. So check it out, pause and a coin. Also, look at the typo on this. This is player two on all this, and this is player two. I mean, that's why I can't stand Pandora's boxes. They're very nice, they're very cheap, but basically now for us to add coins, we have to now just add it to player one. Left, right, left, right. We're gonna load up some Ken, Ryu. Again, we wanna make sure that our buttons work. We always wanna test our buttons. It is a big thing. One, two, three. One, two, three, we're good. One, two, three, one, two, three. We are good. I cannot do a one hand and I do again. So now real quick though, just checking it out. If I do, I could hold down player one and it's gonna load up the menu or, oh, I exited it. But basically player two coin is also a menu button. Let's reload this, check it out. This is really a pause button. I've never seen that, like, this is why I can't stand Pandora's boxes, but now you could basically exit it without holding down the start button on it. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not, I don't know, but right now this is set. We got some credits on this, and that is it. Pandora's box six is set. Uh, I'm gonna try to figure out what we're gonna do about the speaker, um, but basically right now I'm gonna take our, our ghetto rigged power that we got going on, and we are gonna basically just connect it hardwired. But that is it guys, Pandora's box six, RK one up control panel. I'm gonna give him an old um, plastic cover. This will be hide the wires, there's no messing it up. And uh, basically we're gonna probably just mount the Pandora's box on the cover itself, just kind of double edge tape it. But that is it guys, Pandora's box six, RK one up control panels, 1300 games. There you have it.